What's up everyone? My name is Sonic Ogart and welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are doing well and uh, yeah, I'm starting working again so I'm doing fantastic. Although that means that we have shorter like time for videos. Boohoo! So sadly, uh, the videos upcoming are going to be much shorter but they should be informational nonetheless. So, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to program a JavaScript memory game. We're going to split it up in two or three parts one of which is going to be the HTML, CSS, and a little bit of JavaScript variables. And the other part is going to be about JavaScript alone. And uh, th that's going to take a significant amount of time. So that's why we're, why we're going to do that another time. So to start off with, we want to do HTML, CSS. But first, we need to make a little bit of a plan. Because how does a memory game really work, right? Okay, so you click on one button. Okay, values get stored. Uh, you press on another button, okay, those get stored again. And what happens to a memory game then? Well, it freezes in time for a moment, and then it checks whether or not it's correct or not. If it's correct, it usually just instantly flips to green. If it is not correct, then it would show like that it's wrong, but it would still show the user the, the, the cards for a particular amount of time before flipping them back over. That's something you have to keep in mind because if you were to instantly change it, then the second you were to click on the second button and it is wrong, what would happen is it would instantly flip over without you knowing what was under that second card. So to prevent that from happening, we're also going to use timeouts and that sort of thing to prevent the cards from instantly flipping over. We want to give them a little bit more time. So that is what we're going to be focusing on today. So, I have a folder here, JavaScript memory game. We're going to open this in VS Code. I have used Atom for a very long time. I still prefer it, but uh, Visual Studio Code just gives me much faster load times. And if you set up everything correctly, it is actually not that bad. It's just not that user friendly, but you know, maybe that's more of a challenge to me. Maybe that's why I like it. I don't know. Anyhow, it should work pretty much the same if you're using other code. Um, applications and you have Emmet installed, which is something that we're going to use. Uh, you don't need it necessarily. You can just take over my HTML. Uh, I'm sure I'll put some paste bins down in the description below. And uh, so you can copy over the code if you want to. But I strongly recommend that you code along instead of just copying it so you can understand it clearly. So first of all, we're going to start with game.html. So this is a simple HTML file that we're going to create. We're going to create an HTML5 folder. And this is also a thing that I love about Visual Studio Code is that it instantly puts in this viewport with like initial skill, this particular meta tag by default, which is a huge plus because in, in, in Atom, I always forget this. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, let's uh, say a JavaScript memory game. Okay, cool. So let's open up this in the default browser and here is the HTML file. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have a main and inside that main we're going to have 16 buttons. So what we're going to do is we're going to say button, they're all going to have an ID. That ID is going to increment by a number. So we can say button and just a number. I mean we don't have to be specific about our IDs because this is just going to contain a JavaScript, uh, it's just going to contain a memory game, there's nothing else on it. So yeah, we're going to have a button with an ID as a number. And, uh, and 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 uh, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, and then we want 16 of those. There we go, 16 buttons. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the ID and we're gonna press Control D. Now you can also do this on Atom if you have. Uh, well, no, Atom it's actually natively supported. Control D will select the item that's under the cursor and anything alike. So it's kind of like Find but more manual. So I'm gonna press Control D and you can see everything that's the same lights up. And as we keep pressing Control D or hold it even, we're going to select everything that is the same. Which means that if we now move the arrow on the uh, on the, the keyboard, we can now create 16 cursors. So that's very neat. We're going to add a couple of parameters here. So data, I want some extra data values here. So we're going to say data turnable. So that is something that checks whether or not the card is turnable or not. This is going to be a simple Boolean case. So we're going to say true by default. And then we also want a data called number and that's just going to be zero at first. This one is going to be changed later, uh, use double quotes, and that's going to be changed later but we'll come back to that later in the JavaScript portion of the video. So that is the HTML pretty much done. So then we go to the, um, let's say, yeah, let's just, just do simple, game.css, okay? And we're going to reference the CSS here in the HTML so we're going to say link and say game.css. 
Okay, so now I can see that CSS file. Then inside here, we're gonna do some basic cleanup. So we're gonna say box sizing border box because that enables me to do much easier sizing of elements. Then we're gonna say margin zero and padding zero just for some cleanup. And then we can say body. Uh, we want this to be like an app, so we don't want it to be able to scroll. So we're gonna say height. Um, we're gonna say 100 view height. We're gonna say width. 100 view width and then we're going to go to the main and that's going to have display grid on it it's going to have a grid template columns of one of our one of our one of our one of our because so we have four columns which means one fraction each so that means it's going to be evenly split up and four columns times well divided by the 16 is going to be four by four so it should all evenly spread out across the screen and then we just say that the main as a height, so a uh, height of 100 view height. So that will stretch everything out correctly according to the size. So here you can see that now all the buttons are equally spread out across the entire canvas. So that's nice. Uh, because we have 16 buttons, the main is this large and well, we fit this many buttons in there. If I were to put any extra buttons in it, what would happen is it would just cram it in there because we've already said that the height needs to be 100 view height it can't go above that, so that is why it's doing what it's doing. And I think I deleted one too much. Yes, I deleted one too much. There we go. So, with that all set up, let's uh, go to the buttons. So button, and I want to say background color is white. And we're going to say, hmm, let's say font size two rems. So one rem is 16 pixels by default in browsers. And that means that two rem is 32. But if a user were to change their font size in the browser, then that would also change the font size here. So in case someone wants bigger font, then they can simply by changing that value. This is just what we want the size to be in proportion to usual font sizes. So let's just see what that looks like. Let's actually enter some text here. So let's enter a number one and number button ones, for example. We can see it's doing some rescaling uh, of the button. We're gonna come back to that later. I need to remember why this is happening. Uh, clear out that HTML portion. And then finally, we wanna create game.js. And we're gonna load that in the bottom of the HTML folder so I don't have to actually think about um, using the document.ready function that comes with JavaScript. It's really annoying to implement it all the time and this way I don't have to do that. Now, let's go script src and what we're gonna do is we're gonna say game.js and that's gonna load the script. Now, we're just gonna do a couple of variables here. We're not gonna go into depth of the JavaScript yet. We're gonna do that in the next episode, but here I just wanna do a couple of basic things. So, first of all, we want the parameter weight, which is false, okay? So that's the parameter that we're gonna be using when we need to wait for something. Then there's gonna be buttons, okay? So there's gonna be actually, hold on, variable and variable buttons equals document dot uh, query selector all, which is basically the same as a jQuery selector. It's just CSS selector, but it is native JavaScript. So that's cool. So what we wanna select is the buttons. And this will return all the buttons. So here we can log buttons. Let's take a look. So here's a note list of all the buttons. You can see that we have all the buttons and we have access to literally everything of these buttons. We have access to the height, the width, the dimensions, the ID, everything, even text content and any event that is possible on any of these functions, basically. So here there is a text content box. This is the one that we're gonna be filling with content. So um, let's just do some basic stuff first, okay? But let's first get all the other uh, variables ready. So we're also gonna say last known uh, button, uh, which is gonna be undefined. And we're gonna have a variable last known button number. And we're actually gonna say button ID here, so we don't mess that up, uh, equals also undefined. Uh, because the last known button, we actually want to find it by using its ID rather than using some weird, like, other way of selecting it. Like, selecting it by the ID is going to be the most efficient because then we can use document.get element by ID 
Uh, we could do a query selector, but I don't see the point in that if you can just select it by ID. So that's what we're going to be doing. That's just the way I've designed it. You can do whatever you want, of course, if you want to take a different approach of selecting that particular button that you've pressed last. But uh, this is the thing that I'm going to be doing. So the final things that we actually need is the array of numbers that we can actually use. So variable numbers. So this is the, all the numbers that we can actually use. So we're going to create an array. So we're going to say variable numbers equals, and then we're going to say 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, 7, 7, 8, 8. So those are all the numbers that we can use that are going to be assigned to the numbers because we need pairs, right? We need pairs because memory is, well, it's not really a memory game, I guess. Memory is usually with four cards. Um, this is with not as many. This is just two, but it's still memory. So those are the numbers that we're going to be using and that we're going to, those are we going to distribute over all the numbers that you can see in the data values. So that's also something that we're going to be doing. So first of all, we, well, actually we're going to create that function uh, and I'm actually going to import a piece of code first. So hold on a second. Okay. So what this is, is a function that shuffles an array. It is, you can plug it off of the internet. It's what I did. Uh, there is some one that actually explains it very well what exactly it does. If you want to get into the understanding of this shuffle function, but basically what it does, it, it goes backwards through the array and gives everything a position that has not been given yet uh, through a random number that's generated. So it's very useful for shuffling arrays. It is a very simple piece of code, although I'm having trouble understanding it, but there is someone who explains it carefully and I'll link that in the description down below. So this is a function shuffle. We're going to call shuffle and we're going to shuffle numbers. All right. Then what we want to do is we want to distribute these numbers over all the buttons. So we're going to create another function. We're going to say distribute numbers or something like that. Okay. And that function we're going to call here. So function, who oh, function distribute numbers. And what this function is going to do is it's basically going to distribute the function, the, 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 the buttons. So we're going to say for I or uh, sorry, for I equals zero. And then while I is smaller than buttons dot length. So that's the array of buttons. And uh, we want to or actually we can also do numbers dot length, but you know, it doesn't matter They're both the same size. And then we're going to say I plus plus. Okay. And then we're going to continue. And in here, we're just going to cycle through all those buttons. So buttons location I, and we're going to say data set dot number equals numbers I. Okay. So what that is going to do is it's going to set the data set number that we have in the HTML uh, document and going to set it to the number one of the shuffled numbers. So here you'll see if we refresh the page and we load up the HTML here in elements main, you can see that all of them now have data set number changed. Whether if I disable this, well, if I disable that, everything is going to be back to zero, 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 just like we specified. But this is basically overriding it and then setting the button, the data set number. So data number set it, and it's going to be the number from the array that has just been shuffled. So that is the basic functionality of distributing the numbers across it with data. I have not found a way yet to do it in a hidden manner. So you can't cheat. Uh, I'm sure that there is a way I haven't figured it out yet. If you do, let me know in the comments down below, but this is the as much JavaScript as we're going to do today. I want to thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and learned something. The next portion is going to be pure JavaScript and only JavaScript. So stay tuned for that. This is going to take a little bit more time as I'm working now. So I have less time to make these videos and I need to edit basically on my work. So again, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for your support. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.